Francois Risa Kauzia grew up in rural western Uganda, watching her mother help women deliver their babies. When she was old enough, she joined the midwifery training school. And as a midwife, I realized that the same problems that my mother was faced with at the time are the same uh, problems that we were faced with. Mothers coming late to have the babies, children dying at birth. She was later employed at Mulago Hospital as a midwife, but the situation there was both difficult and desperate. There were more mothers coming in than they were prepared and had space for, and at a point, it felt that they were transferring infections from one mother to another with a few shared instruments. We had only one scissor to cut the cord, to cut a episiotomy. Francois decided it was safer to get her own surgical blades, which she carried around with her. This was in 1983, but it was harder in the years that followed during the Liberation War with bullets flying around and it being unsafe to have patients admitted to the wards. Also, most midwives were afraid to go to work. I used to leave the hostel, run, go to the ward, mix the antibiotics, give the mothers, and I would run back every day until their doses were over. The Mulago Hospital of today is considerably better than back then, she says, but what pains her is the little attention given to health workers now. If I don't have food in my house, if I don't have, if I can't have even treatment, if I can't get treatment myself, and I'm working in a facility where I'm supposed to be giving treatment or providing health to other people, it becomes difficult to give it. When our husband had to move to the United States, Francois and the children followed. However, she does not feel that she abandoned the country in need of her skills. I went to look for the knowledge to use to give the services that are more defined to give the services where I know I can stand and change policy. She is the founder of Action for Reproductive Health, an NGO focused on maternal health, mostly in rural areas. What she would like to see is more male involvement in maternal matters. She says while many men do not even escort their wives to the hospital, the few who do are being kicked out. They would tell the man to stay out. They would not allow the man to witness a baby being born, his baby being born. They would not allow the, the man to touch the woman. Her view is that it is important for the man to be present in the labor room, first because it creates a bond between the couple and also because it gives little room for babies to be switched. You can't say that the midwife has changed the gender, you know, switched babies or given you a dead baby when yours is is alive. It also makes a man feel the pain which a woman goes through, appreciates that his wife is actually doing something great. It ceases to be her issue. It becomes the couple's issue. Uganda, in her opinion, is still far behind in terms of maternal health. The numbers of deaths recorded might be fewer, but that is because there is a loophole in the system. No one records a dead baby somewhere, a mother who died, you know, the village will know. But this, this information is not going to be brought to the, to the Minister of Health. She is a mother of five boys. She and her husband, John Mary Kauzia, have taught their children to treat everyone equally and to give women their right standing in society. The boys who are old enough to have girlfriends have been told to treat them with respect. We teach them that those girls as important as they are, and that it's their job to make sure that those girls are happy. It's their job also to make sure that these boys, uh, these girls, are promoted to the level they think they can go up to. She misses life back home, even though life in the States has its pluses. When you're out, you have insurance. If you don't have it, you don't have a life. Here, I think we take a lot for granted. We have food. We need someone to teach us. When I'm talking about the people that are in the villages that think only eggs should be sold for money, that don't think if you eat greens, that's an important thing. Those need education.
At one point, Francois had to leave a well-paying job because it kept her far away from her children. If anybody ever says, you're working so hard, you're doing great things, and you're neglecting your children, then that person is not, is not right. That person is lost. Because the, first, the priority that we have as mothers is our children. She was born in Mitoma, Western Uganda. She is a 53-year-old advocate of maternal and child health. Josephine Karunji, NTV.